Hey guys, Tony Rowe back with a, another Lee Chess uh, Rapid game. I'm going to start off with the English against Grez. Geez, what are these names? I'm not even going to give a shot. I'm not even trying. Uh, what do I want to play here? I'll play Knight C3. Um, the Marin move is this move, but I really don't feel like playing that. I'm not going to. I'm just going to play d4, presumably d6, and I'll play knight f3, and we've transposed back to a normal Fianchetto King's Indian defense. And this is the Pano variation. I'm trying to remember what I analyzed here. It's d5 right away, or is it d5 after a6? I'm just going to castle. <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember. But that's okay. Bishop f5, not a normal move here. Uh, my immediate thought is to go d5. And after knight b4, which might be irritating, I can go knight d4 and get a tempo on this, this bishop. That seems like a reasonable exploitation of him putting the bishop on f5. And if I go d5, knight a5... He'd be hitting c4, but perhaps I can go knight d2 in that case. And I have a little bit of extra momentum, actually, because when my, with my knight on d2, I can play e4 and gain a tempo on that. That bishop. Hmm. Okay, I'm not going to think too much about it. I'm going to play d5. d5 is a normal move in the pano anyway. Normally, uh, in this position, black usually tries to go a6, rook b8, and b5. Um, which is a relatively natural exploitation of of g3 and bishop g2. I think one of the main downsides of Fianchetto and your light-squared bishop is that the c4 pawn is a little bit loose compared to if white had played e4 and, you know, bishop e2 and kept it where it defended the, the c4 pawn. And if white has to go something like b3, then, then he opens up the long diagonal. So logical uh, to go... Now, I could go b3 here, I guess. I mean, there is a lot of rationale to putting my knight on d4 as well. The only trick is that b3, knight, knight e4 might win instantly. Um, yeah, I'm not feeling that so much. I'm just going to go knight d2. Also note that here, now that the c4 pawn is protected, uh, this knight on a5, there's sort of a lingering threat of b4. I'm actually not sure, again, moving the b pawn is a threat because knight e4, but... Uh, yeah, probably, probably still is. Something like b4, knight e4. Um, I could even take one time. Like, knight takes e4, bishop takes e4... Uh, yeah, bishop takes a4, bishop takes a1, b takes a5. So, hmm. Okay, I'm going to go e4. Take my free move. He could go bishop g4. I might even just let him have the tempo and go queen c2 in that case. Or do I just go f3? f3, bishop d7. I think I'm just going to go queen c2. Hmm. Maybe. <laughs> I'm also thinking about f3, bishop d7, b4, knight b7, knight b7. And then maybe just like rook b1. Um, 
you know what? Let's do that. The only reason I'm, I'm I mean, the, the gain of time is, is relevant. I mean, after queen c2, black would have a move. Okay, he's going all the way back. Maybe I'll go rook b1 first. If b4, I don't know, maybe knight e4 is somehow. It doesn't much matter. I'm, I'm going to go b4, and I, I want to play rook b1 first because something like uh, b4, knight God, I'm literally the worst with arrows. All right, b4, knight b7, uh, and then let's say some usual move like queen c2. Black could play a5, and I can't play a3 and support the pawn because a takes b4, a takes b4, rook takes a1, would, would win, a, win a rook. Ah, okay, so he makes a move. And uh, I will go queen c2 in this case. Protecting my knight such that I can go b4. Right now, he would take on c3. He does have this check, but I don't much care. I don't think that's uh, a big deal. So black needs to be very careful here, actually, because he's... Black has less space, and I think also he's got uh, some development and coordination issues. Obviously, his bishop is a total beast. But but um, this knight on a5... Uh, as long as c4 is well defended, is is moderately stupid. Um, and he's played bishop g f5 to g4, back to c8, and then he's played you know knight f6 to d7. Uh, he 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 has to be a little bit careful that he doesn't just work his way into a very passive position where he has coordination problems and white has more space with all of the pieces on the board. By the way, so it's um. It's a little, I think, this position's a little bit tenuous for black. He has to be precise. Okay, I do have the option to take EP here. I'm not sure that it's anything. I could also just go A3, which would be a very usual way to play. So, if b takes c6, knight takes c6, yeah, I'm not in love with that. Then knight d4 is coming. I kind of like just leaving this knight on a5 to, to suffer and keeping my d-pawn, stopping knight back to c6 and all that. So I'm probably not taking all passant. What am I doing instead? A3 seems really normal, really usual, just getting ready for B4. I think I'm just gonna, I'm gonna play that. I'm trying to be a little bit more conscious with my time here. I say that every game, it, it doesn't help at all, actually, but saying it makes me feel a little bit better about myself. <clears throat> I'll be interested to see what uh, the database recommendation is against Bishop F5. D5, knight a5, knight d2 seems very natural to me, but maybe there's something a little bit more uh, forceful or accurate. We shall see. One thing to note is that um, after d5, knight a5, knight d2, I think c5 was possible right away, stopping the peace trapping options and also grabbing uh, that bit in the center. I think b6 might... You know, b6, obviously, black gets ready with, for knight b7, but I think if black is playing c5 anyway to stop the b4 threat, then maybe b6 is going to turn out to be a wasted move. And maybe a dangerous move, even, you never know. In a lot of these uh, King's Indian positions where black goes knight a5, it's very thematic for him to go rook b8, a6, and then b5. And if black ends up going a6, rook b8, and then b5, he's essentially lost the tempo with by playing b6 and then b5. But... Eh, we'll see. I'm not saying I played uh, like a champion either, so. What will black do? Okay. Bishop d4 check. I don't really have a lot of choice. Okay, this guy's really going for it. Just plumber style, plugging up all of the leaks. 
The problem is after b4, isn't this knight on b7 just literally the worst piece in the world? Is it better for me to play d takes e6, f takes e6, and then b4? d takes e6, f takes e6, b4? Probably not, though, because uh, then he can go knight c6. Knight e2, possibly, first. I don't think it matters. I'm just going to do this. He doesn't take. I'm not surprised. I'm going to play knight b3. Not necessarily because I want to take this, just because I need to get my, my dark square bishop to a useful square, and, you know, maybe at some point down the road the pressure on the c5 pawn is, is relevant. It, it might be the case that I want to take here at some point and play uh, knight d1 to f2 to d3. That would be a very usual plan. That's something worth thinking about. Black does have to solve the problem of, of this knight here, <laughs> and this knight, and, and this bishop. Or this bishop and this knight. I might play this stupid-looking knight d1 next move. Preparing to essentially go knight takes d4, knight f2 on the next moves. Just not taking on d4 right away. I don't know if it's actually uh, necessary for me to do that, but I'm doing it. Okay, he goes f5. Taking really is not a threat. I'm not worried about that at all. What do I do? That is annoying in that I would like to take on e4 with the knight, presumably. Well, I'm not even sure that's that's really the case. Bishop h3 is, is sort of uh, logical. E takes f5 is interesting. Oh, actually, e takes f5 is very interesting. So if takes, takes, bishop h3, presumably he's going something like queen f6. Takes is worth considering just because I think after bishop h3, black might have some light squared problems. Again, this knight is unreasonably placed and blocks the, the light squared bishop. And presumably e takes f e takes f five rather rook takes is just completely out of the question. Um, jeez. Yeah, I'd like to go knight d one, but f takes e four, f takes e four. This sort of discombobulates a lot of my pieces. At some point, black is also probably going to play a five. I'm guessing and force me to kind of make a decision whether or not I want to go b5 or take or whatever. Could go bishop h6 first. I don't necessarily see the value in that right away, though. Um, I'm going to take. Happy National Puppy Day, by the way, for all of you uh, dog people out there, especially if you got a young pup. I have a young pup, but I don't have him yet. He's in training. So I get pictures sometimes from the trainer, but that's about it. So National Puppy Day is kind of sad. <laughs> but I got new pictures of my cute puppy today, so I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. His name's Morty. He's a golden doodle. I think queen f6 is very natural here. Yeah. Call me crazy, but I'm kind of tempted to go g4. Let's 
Maybe that is crazy, but I kind of, ah, maybe, maybe. My idea is to undermine the the f5 pawn's control of the e4 square. So if I go g4, f4, knight e4, this knight is just gonna be a beast. Um, but maybe if g4, you can take on c3. And then I'll be kind of sad that I played g4. Maybe knight b5. Knight c7 to e6 is kind of irritating. Um, hmm. Yeah, nothing else is really calling my name. This seems irritating, though, no? What does he do about that? And the funny thing is, is like he would really like to move this, like he would really like this bishop to be able to guard the e6 square, but this knight just has no reasonable squares. <laughs> can't can't move here, can't move here, can't move here. Um, he can't really play e4. I would just take it. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it would be nice for me to for me to be able to play this way. If rook f7, then maybe I can go bishop g5, or I can go knight g5. And with the pawn on f5, this knight doesn't have a great future. e2 is not not a particularly impressive square. Um, so maybe, I mean, e6 is really about as good as this knight could literally ever hope for anyway. And So we'll try that. Hmm. Ah, that's a good move. No really good way for me to to win the e4 square or anything. need a plan. I don't really have one. <laughs> I'm just kind of playing moves that appear logical in no particular order with no rhyme or reason. F4 is intriguing, trying to again undermine the control of this bishop, and I'd also be threatening to, well, I wouldn't even really be threatening to take there and then take on F5. Can't really deflect the queen from this dude. So what the heck? I mean, f4, e takes f4. I mean, I, I guess he's not going to take here because I can just take on d4 and, and totally shatter his structure. If he goes e4, what, what am I doing there, though? I don't necessarily... Ah, maybe f4, e4... Knight takes d4, c takes d4, bishop b2 is playable. Or, or like queen b2 or something. Can I undermine? Uh, if f4, e4... Knight three takes d4, c takes d4, bishop b2, d3. That's a mess. A terrifying mess, in fact. Somehow g4 is calling my name. I really feel like I just need to kind of break up, geez, <laughs> break up his control of these things, and, and the e4 square would be super relevant. It's also kind of nice that his king is... On the G file. I'm just going to play this. What the heck. Let's do it. And I'm going to pre-move bishop takes G4. So that's my idea, of course.
if f takes g4, f takes g4, black can probably even play queen takes f1. Bishop takes f1, rook takes f1, king g2, rook f2 check, queen takes f2. What does that look like? I don't know. That might be good for me. But bishop takes g4 is, I think, more positionally uh, sound. And maybe I feel a little bit dumb now that I played knight b5, because if he if he takes and I take back with the bishop, I would have been very happy to play this move, which now is not possible. On f4, I can I can actually play g5, which is interesting. Very interesting, because if f4, g5, it, it looks like the queen could just take it because my bishop no longer guards this pawn because his pawn is on f4. But I can play knight takes d4, and no matter which way he captures, let's say c takes d4, I can play rook g1 and pin his queen to his king. And f4, g5, I then reopen up control of this e6 square, and maybe I can go knight c7 to e6. And if he takes with the knight, then I can either take with the pawn, and it's protected by the bishop, or I can just take with the bishop check and have a sweet bishop on e6. If he takes and I take back, yeah. I mean, if I go here, he might take this, but maybe I'm not. If I go here to, to put my knight on e4, maybe he just takes it. I don't know. But I, I wouldn't even be necessarily sad if he took it. I'd have two reasonable bishops, and I could put my rook on g1 again, and... This, the only really redeeming quality about his position would be gone, so. E4 as a sacrifice is, like, kind of tempting in a lot of these positions for black just to uh, go knight e5. The knight on e5 is a very strong piece, and the e5 outpost in general is useful. Maybe black should try to arrange h5 somehow, like queen h4, or some nonsense to just budge my bishop from this good square. It's a good defensive square. It's a it's an active diagonal. Maybe this is reasonable. But maybe I can just go knight c7 in that case. Queen h4, knight c7, h5, knight takes a8, h takes g4, maybe queen g2 in that case, pinning the pawn and then I'm just going to take back with the queen. I can't do that, actually. I can't take back with the queen. Queen takes g4, f takes g4. But up, up, hangs a rook. It's starting to become reasonable that I'm just going to play knight takes d4. Um, now that I have access to the e4 square, I'm, I'm a little less concerned about him having pawns on c, uh, the c, uh, c, c4 and e5 squares. Um, before, with a pawn on f5, maybe with the pawns on these squares, e4 would have been very dangerous. But um, now I'm not I'm not as concerned. So maybe I just want to take this at some point and have an uncontested dark squared bishop. That that position I think would be relatively pleasant for me as well. Okay, so he just bounces. Not a bad idea. <laughs> Funny idea. Uh, knight c7, rook b8, knight e6, knight takes e6, d takes e6. Does that trap a knight? Can't go here, can't go here. There's a rook on b8, can't go here, can't go here. Let's, uh... <laughs> uh that's funny. Let's play that. I don't... I, I mean, he could just move the rook, but I think... That that's... Probably... Eh. Maybe I should just leave it for now and play something else. What do I play? Uh, let, let's go 96. I don't have a lot of time. Okay, you saw it. Damn. <laughs> What do I play here? It's starting to get to the point where I just want to take that bishop. But taking the bishop has really like serious long-term consequences after c takes d4. I'm a little terrified by that. Can 
Can I just play knight d2 to e4? Do I lose somehow? Uh, I'm going to play knight d2, I think. e4 is obviously the best square, and I don't really see anything else going on. I'm going to have to speed up. His knight now has the f5 square, so if he takes on e6, I probably should take with the bishop. My king's a little drafty, actually. Maybe I should have taken the... Yeah, it's, it's just like decisions like these absolutely kill me in chess. Like, if I take this bishop, he has the this uh, strong pass c pawn that I'm going to have to babysit for the rest of the game. And endings, a lot of endings become very scary with him having this deep on ready to sort of go, so... But if I don't take it, then there's constantly, like, problems with the g1 square. Like, I can't put a rook here, and now that his rook is on g8, maybe knight c7 wasn't that good. I saw this cute idea, and, I mean, optically, this knight is quite good here, but I have some small problems with uh, with the g1 square now. Like, my coordination is really bad. Queen g6. Oh, I'm threatening his rook, so he has to move it. Probably rook g7. Then I'll go knight e4. Maybe I'm like just in time. So like rook g7. Maybe rook g7, knight e4. Rook g7, knight e4. Queen g6. He's threatening mate there, but I can cover it, and this square is covered. This is starting to look a little uncomfortable, though. The G file is <laughs> my my own undoing. G four, um, opening up the G file for my opponent. Double X clam, idiot. <laughs> I won the E four square, but I'm gonna get checkmated, which is like you know, the story of my chess career. Conquer, try and conquer positionally, and then like you know, blunder. So rook g6, an interesting choice of squares, all things considered. So knight e4, queen h4. Oh, knight e4, I lose immediately. God, I'm glad I didn't play that. Knight e4, queen takes f3, rook takes f3, rook g1 main. Wow, this is much more serious than I thought. Oh, no. Maybe bishop b2, but my bishop is just like, should not be on this square. Ay, ay, ay. What can I play instead? Oh no. Bishop f5, bishop g4. Queen f5. Ah, I'm going to play queen f5. So just trading off the queens, I mean, I'm under a little bit of pressure here, I, I would say, with my king, so it makes some sense uh, in that respect. And also, I think that, you know, I have this just simple threat to capture. Well, yeah, I do. <laughs> I was going to say, maybe I can't even, maybe I can't even win the piece, but I think probably I, I couldn't take it in that case. F3 is still guarded by my knight. That's one bonus. So if he takes, I would be happy. Um, presumably he'd go something like rook f6 or rook g5, and then I'd put my bishop back on e6. Nope, he's... He says, screw that. Uh, logical. Um, okay, don't have much of a choice. Gotta guard g1. Play rook g2. Bishop d4. Rook takes d2. Threatening mate. I'd have to go bishop f2. That doesn't look uh, super comfortable for me, to be honest. Uh, but you know what? Maybe... Ah, maybe rook g2, bishop takes g4, rook takes d2, rook g1. That's actually quite good for me, I think. Stopping the, the mate threat. He's got a rook on d2, remember, so he's threatening queen g2 mate. 
So maybe this is actually okay now. Ah, okay. Well, I'm going to take here in that case. Ah, I did give him just give him the e5 square. But he can't go 95 yet because I have this pin. Hopefully he can't go 95 yet because of that pin. I'll take back. Ooh, saucy. Uh, I'm hoping he can't take twice because of this pin. And if he can't, then, yeah, I mean, c6 is a pretty legit threat here. He can go knight b6, but I'll be very happy to have that pawn on c6 for the rest of the game. Ay, ay, ay. So probably as soon as I can, I, I want to play play rook g1 and just sort of eliminate the idea of, of rook g2. I guess I can always meet rook g2 with rook g1, though, so that's good. We're both sort of getting in time trouble, and I'm already not sort of in time trouble. I am in time trouble. He's sort of getting into time trouble here, too. I don't think he... He had enough time to think through the consequences of b5 if he wanted to play it. He played that move very quickly. And maybe it's not the best move if c5 is good. Mm, okay, I'll go here. Now if he takes, I'll play bishop takes d7, I think, and then boop his rook on b8. Ah, he can do that now, though. Okay, well, you know, touche. I'll go 94. Hit this dude. Taking on d6 is a pretty serious threat. No. I'm going to take that thing. I also have the threat of, of queen takes e5, which I don't think he saw. Cheapo's abound here. Little CTR fork trick here. Ooh, and I get to trade queens. So he's probably just uh, totally losing now. I'm going to guess. Um, yeah, I'm just going to... Okay, that just loses everything. Wow. Really lucky. <laughs> uh, I felt like I was under quite a bit of pressure there, and... Yeah, I just sort of... He just... Totally bungled it. Recording. True. <clears throat> uh, okay, so let's take a look. Standard Fienchetto. Yeah, like I said, I, I normally, when I play the English, I don't really want to go into a normal King's Indian, but, you know, to keep my channel from becoming a, you know, English flank openings only, like, style uh, lame fest, <laughs> I'll play, you know, sort of, I try to play some mainline openings every now and then because, you know. So... The usual way that I would probably play is e4, and after d6, I would play knight e2, c5, castles, knight c6, d3. This is sort of a, this is the Botfinic, uh system, this setup with uh, c4, d3, e4, with the bishop on g2, knights on c3 and e2, um, and it's, Yeah, I mean, it's an interesting system. I don't think objectively white should have an advantage, but it's uh, a system I played a lot. It's an easy system to play. Um, I think the main line goes a6, h3. White wants to go bishop e3, but bishop e3 immediately, knight g4 would be kind of annoying. Rook b8, so black is preparing to start chipping away at, at uh, white's queen side with b5 and open up the rook against b2, uh, start introducing some ten pawn tension against c4. White normally stops that with a4, and I think uh, either bishop d7, like the computer likes, but I think knight e8 is more popular. Let's take a look. Yeah, knight e8. Oh, great. <laughs> uh, Questo guy says I missed a maiden one. Not, not at all shocking to me, but uh, disappointing nonetheless. <laughs> um, so knight e8, black plans to go knight c6, uh, knight c7, rather, and from c7, the knight supports uh, the b5 advance, but also might go to e6 and then d4. So, obviously, white has a problem with his d4 square. Uh, black would be, you know, it's in black's best interest to sort of gang up on that weakness. So, 
Uh, yeah, and the only thing about knight c7 is the most popular move, but the problem with knight c7 is that it allows d4, and after c takes d4, knight takes d4. Um, I think it's about equal, but um, black needs to be a little bit careful that, that white's space advantage in the center, you know, this sort of bind structure doesn't become a little bit alarming. Like, I think after knight e6, white's not exchanging, he's going to go knight d to e2, and leave black with all four minor pieces, you know, with the space advantage, etc., and... Uh, yeah, again, I think black should be okay, but probably the strategic risk is, is really mostly on him, but, uh, oh man, ah, yeah, I did miss a mate. I know exactly what they're talking about. That moment when I was so happy to exchange Queens with queen, <laughs> queen E5 takes G7, I had a pin here and my whole idea was that after queen takes e5, I could play uh, knight to f7 check with this king here and then take back, except that in the position he played like rook somewhere to f8, I could have just played knight to f7 mate because the only way he could take it is his queen and it's pinned to his king. I'll show you in a second when we get there. Okay, so yeah, this would be sort of the the typical way this Botfinex setup goes. This was recommended by Marin in his GM repertoire uh, 1c4 series. It's an interesting line. I'm trying to get away from it, though. I, I don't necessarily enjoy it all that much. I like it quite a bit more when black has already committed uh, the pawn to e5. So there's a similar system after 1e5 that goes like this. And here I like to uh, erect the Botfinex setup. And after like d6, knight g to e2, knight g e7, uh, f5 is also a move here I think is pretty good. Knight g to e7 is the most popular. Castles, castles, uh d3. I think this is um, a little bit more of a pleasant version. I would rather have black have the pawn on e5 uh, blocking the bishop than the pawn on c5, but that's just me. Uh, so I, I've been trying to find like another anti-King's Indian here for a long time, and I've really struggled to find almost anything. Like if you look at the, the main moves, like there's knight f3, d4, and e4, which is the move that I mentioned, and d4 and knight f3 are going to lead to sort of mainline fee and ghetto position. So uh, I think Costin in the Dynamic English a long time ago recommended this line, bishop g5, but um, I don't totally get this, actually. I mean, h6, white pretty much has to go back to d2, and then c5 would, you know, most likely bring us to something like if white plays e4. It would just be a worse version, I think, of, of the positions we've already seen. And yeah, after knight f3, I, I don't think uh, white's position has a lot of teeth. And white scored okay, but... Um, I'm not sure it's actually anything. So d4, d6, knight f3, and we're back in a mainline king's Indian. So we would normally reach this position uh, not by c4, but something like this. So etc. Uh, and knight c6 usually signals. Uh, not not the main move, by the way. Well, I guess it is the main move nowadays. It used to not be the main move. So the, the normal main line would be knight b to d7, and after castles, e5, e4, uh, c6, I think, is the main move. We'll wait for the opening explorer to update, just to verify. e takes d4 is popular, too, but I think c6 is the main move, getting ready to sort of bring the queen out to some square. h3, again, white wants to play bishop e2, or bishop e3, rather, and then, yeah, now queen b6. Black has to be a little bit careful here. Like, a lot of people who maybe aren't familiar with the King's Indian play e takes d4 here, knight takes d4. And then, like, they try to use uh, knight e5 to attack the c4 pawn or knight c5 to attack the e4 pawn. But um, you can see, like, after white's main moves, I like b3 specifically in this position. And knight, knight c5, rook e1. Uh, you can see that white scores like insanely well. So a5 stopping b4 at some point, and then I like bishop f4. Uh, yeah, you can see white scores like unbelievably well here, and it's simply because eventually black is just going to run out of constructive moves. He doesn't really have a pawn break, and he has less space, uh, and so it's just not that easy for black to find an active plan. Like computers only think it's like plus 0.3, but I think white already probably is like plus minus vertical. Knight h5 is the main move uh, for lack of something better, and also because d d6 is starting to look a little bit sensitive with, with these two pieces. Uh, this pawn is just very weak. And they, black actually, sadly, usually goes back. You can see in the opening explorer. But I think after queen c2, uh, 
I've looked at this position a lot. I think white is uh, very much better. Um, after almost any move, white will play rogate to d1, f4, bishop f2, and black just gets uh, squeezed to death, and white can sort of uh, gang up on this d6 pawn at will. Black has to be a little bit worried about e5 tactics, deflecting this pawn away from the protection of this knight, etc. It's really bad, actually. But um, after knight b to d7, castles e5, e4, c6, h3, queen b6, this is the main line. And one interesting idea I just want to show really quick is c5, deflecting the c pawn away from this e pawn. So after d takes c5, white plays d takes e5, knight e8. Uh, and this, this was a very uh, hot theoretical position in, um, I think, like the 90s and the early 2000s. I... White tends to score pretty well here, but I think the, like, theoretical evaluation of this is that it's okay for black. Um, yeah, I haven't looked at it in a long time, though. I think Catronius covers this in his his uh, GM repertoire, uh, King's Indian Defense books, but I'm not sure. So, yeah, after knight c6, uh, the main move is a6, and like I said, black is going for rook b8 and b5 with counterplay on the queen side. And... There are a lot of lines here. H3, I think, is the most popular move. D5 is sort of one of the most principled moves, but there's also B3. Uh, I won't go... Yeah, I won't go into the theory here. Uh, probably at some point I'll have a game that I reach as, as black or white from that position, so uh, I'll let that go for now. So after bishop f5, yeah, d5 was calling out to me as, as probably the main challenge, but I think probably... Other moves are interesting here. I thought about rookie one as well, but I, I assumed black would go knight e4. And then, you know, my aspirations for e4 sort of uh, shut down for the moment. So I, I didn't like that that much. And other than that, I mean, what else am I going to do? Knight h4 is interesting. But I mean, you, black could almost claim that after knight h4, bishop d7, that he's played bishop d7 and forced white's knight to this crappy square. So it's almost like the insertion of uh, donating white... Knight h4 for free seems like kind of a detriment, actually. I'm not I'm not sure I'm into that, despite what Stockfish says. Yeah, knight e1 is a move as well that probably, if I thought of it at the time, I I thought of uh, this knight move, but I didn't think of knight e1. If I, if I thought of this at the time, I probably would have played it. I like this move. Controlling the e4 square and getting ready for uh, e4, opening up the bishop, and I think on d3 this knight will be well placed anyway. Sorry, just um, being polite. Uh, and then I wouldn't be surprised if black went queen d7 to, to meet e4 with bishop h3. So, like, knight a5 is the main move, but probably I would expect my opponent to play queen d7. It's a little bit more natural. And then bishop h3. And, yeah, I mean, I like white a little bit. This is seems relevant. Probably a, a small advantage, but d5, okay. And after knight a5, a big question for me is whether or not I want to go knight d4, or if I can go knight d4, or if I if I need to go knight d2. So knight d4 is the move I'd like to play, but I was worried about this. I didn't necessarily see anything concrete here. I guess I can win the pawn back with queen d3. How good is this for white? Probably pretty good, actually. Just expanding in the center seems hard to stop, even if I have to go like queen c2 first. Yeah, I like white a little bit here. I, I like the knight on d4. If he goes bishop d7, then I'm happy to go b3, and I think white's probably a little bit better. Ah, but c5, b takes, knight takes. Probably white's still a little bit better. Yeah, b, bishop b2 is interesting. Maybe e3. But if I if I don't have to go e3, maybe maybe this is more accurate. I'd be a little bit worried about this, but hmm. a funny tactic if if you guys have never seen it would be something like uh, queen c7 and knight d5 is probably quite good there because if knight d5 uh, black can't take. But I just wanted I just thought of this tactic while I was analyzing for a second, so I thought I would show it something like this. Uh, Uh, does it work here? It might not actually work here. 
Rook c1. What happens if black goes knight g4? Can I take this? Yeah, that's okay. That's what I wanted to do. So white can take on g7. So uh, if something like queen c7, rook c1, and now if if black tries to uh, discover some kind of an attack on the queen, uh, white can take on g7, queen king takes g7, and then a knight discovery wins back the queen, which is kind of funny. And white will be up a piece with an attack on this rook. There's a similar version if the bishop is on e6 that's quite humorous as well. Uh, so if, for instance, rook c1, bishop e6, rook fd1, these are just made-up moves. And now if black tries to get cute with knight d5, the point being that queen takes d5 is impossible because the bishop is now on this square. And if the queen moves, black will just take a bunch of times on c3 and exchange a bunch of pieces. But again, there's, there's queen takes g7, king takes g7, knight takes d5 check this time, and then knight takes c7, and it's a total blowout. So that's just kind of adorable. I just wanted to show that. But I went knight d2, which also seems reasonable. I'm just getting ready for for uh, e4. And uh, lo long term, I think, white's plan is to go sort of b4, c5, etc. with play on the queen side. And the knight might be powerful coming to c4 after I've played c5. Or after b4, uh, knight b3, it helps get the c5 advance in. So I thought this was reasonable. And, yeah, b6 novelty, I don't think this move is very good. Um, it's a very natural move. I don't blame my opponent for playing it. Of course, he's he's getting ready to meet b4 with knight b7. But right now, b4 might be a threat, so trapping this this wayward knight here. But um, I think if, if you want to stop b4, then c5 is a more logical way to do it. And, again, black should be looking for rook b8, a6, and b5. That's the usual plan with, you know, sort of this pawn structure with this bishop here. It's a good way to work up play on the queen side. Again, th there's that old uh, pawn chain rule that you want to play on the side that your your pawn chain points to. And so uh, if that's not clear, black's pawn chain points uh, in this direction. And a lot of times, so so that signals that black probably wants to play on the queen side. It's just kind of a good rule of thumb. And usually, w when you want to play on the side of your board that your pawn chain points to, it's important to figure out a way to uh, introduce tension at the like furthest point in the pawn chain. And what I mean by that is you'd go to the front of the pawn chain, you'd see that there are these pawns here, and you'd know that to play on the queen side and to gain more space on the queen side, that perhaps you need to work for this break specifically. Um, and for instance... For white, on the other hand, my pawn chain points, you know, in this direction. And the furthest place in the pawn chain that I could introduce uh, pawn tension and play would be e5. So it's it's typical that white would want to play e4 and then e5. So that's kind of why I'm going knight d2. I'd like to go e4 and work my way up towards e5. And... If you've never heard of that rule before, you'll start seeing it pop up like literally everywhere if you pay attention. Like, uh, for instance, in the Mar del Plata version of the King's Indian Defense. I'm sorry, I'm getting way off track here, but I think it's it's something that I brought up, and it's something that maybe uh, some of my newer viewers, if I have some, uh, might not be familiar with. So, this is the Mar del whoop, this is the Mar del Plata version of the King's Indian Defense. Just sort of disregard these moves. Just take take me at my word here. So already, actually, Black's pawn chain points this way. You can find sort of, sort of the point at which uh, the pawn's lock that's furthest away from, from the base of Black's pawn chain and know that Black should probably play f5 here. And that is indeed the move. And then Black closes the position down again and furthers his pawn chain. Now it goes all the way here. And now if you, if you look at these sort of two furthermost uh, advanced pawns, probably now you know that the best way to organize Black's uh, play on the king side is to go g5, g4. And usually Black takes it even further and goes g5, g4, and then g3. So, and similarly, White has this pawn chain that points this way. We know he's going to play c5. And uh, I sort of screwed this up. Uh, let's say bishop d2, knight f6, f3, f4. This is the main line. The other way is fine too, but this is this is the usual way that we get there. And then normally white actually plays c5 right away. And black plays g5, so getting ready for g4, and uh, so forth. So that's a good example. There, there are tons of other examples, though, like modern Bononi, for instance. 
uh, in this structure, again, black black's pawn chain sort of points in this direction. This is kind of a more loose example. Black wants to get in b5, uh, and white is normally angling for e5. So, okay, sorry about that. Yeah, bishop g4. I thought about queen c2. I'm, I'm not sure f3 is any worse, actually. And then after bishop d7, uh, we just, you know, continue playing. But maybe queen c2 is a little bit more accurate. I ended up playing queen c2 anyway, so now, after the game, I sort of feel like probably I should have just played queen c2 immediately instead of f4, bishop d7. But um, I don't think it much matters. Rook b1. So I do have other moves here. I thought about I thought about b4 immediately, of course, and after knight b7, like rook b1, I think is fine. The computer suggests that some kind of discovery is is possible, which is interesting. So if knight e4, ah, that doesn't work because I can take and my knight's defended. But if here, I don't I just win uh, two pieces for a rook? Isn't this just kind of good for me? I'm probably not taking here because it opens up the rook against my weak a2 pawn. But this seems better for white. I mean, I have I have uh, two knights for the rook, and yeah, I don't think in this position the rook is particularly great with all of the pawns on the board. These won't be active for a long time, but so I don't think that's very good. Queen c2, getting ready for b4 without hanging a piece. c5, a3. Hmm. Peter likes b3 better. Why is that? So if black plays the same way as he did in the game, let's say. Okay, knight b5, sure. Let's say knight b7 guarding d6. This knight has to go back to b7 anyway. Yeah, I don't, I don't totally understand why this is any better than what I played in the game, but maybe we'll see. Yeah, I got into some trouble in this game. Um, let's just check knight d1, because I really wanted to play this move. I thought this was kind of shady, though. It seemed like like white was a little bit uh, disorganized here. Yeah, I don't like that that much. Hmm. G takes f5 is probably not the only move, though. I wonder about knight b5. Maybe I should connect my rooks here, though. Like, maybe bishop f7, rook f7 right away. And now knight b5. A lot of these things, I mean, I mean most moves, I, I guess, will just be good for white. Uh, white has more space um, in the center, and I think black has some problems with his minor pieces that white doesn't really have, especially after I get to play bishop h3. This is really the only piece that you could, you could argue is bad. Maybe this knight on b3 isn't great, since I'm reluctant to play knight takes d4, but... In general, I mean, I think white is more comfortable here after a lot of things. I can leave the tension on f5 for a long time, but I think I sort of saw directly that bishop h3 seemed good to me, and after queen f6, wow, bishop c3 is a surprising recommendation, and then queen f6, why is that? That makes me think that I missed something involving this bishop or, you know, some kind of knight tech. I would, uh, no human player would probably ever play bishop takes c3 giving up the bishop for the knight, and this bishop is really very nice, and, you know, black would be very happy if white played knight takes d4, so it's kind of a curious... Ah, uh, f4, I looked at this, but I didn't play it. I looked at f4, e4, knight 3 takes d4, c takes d4, bishop b2, d3, and wasn't super excited by this for obvious reasons, but this thing is a monster. This is true. I wonder, I was just about to say, I wonder if queen g2 is possible with g4 up next. Because if I can get in g4, then not only is black in mega problems with his king, but also, wow, I'm just like totally winning here, actually. That is so sick. Absolutely massive misevaluation of this position. But I didn't see queen g2 this far into the variation. Yeah, g4 just blowing up uh, the G file with this with this massive bishop on G2 and also undermining these pawns. I mean, if these pawns start falling, black is totally lost. Hmm, that would have been nice. Maybe black probably is not playing E4, but um, do wish I found that. 
Hmm, kind of a mess. Let's get the computer analysis going here, just so that when I'm I'm ready. But G4 wasn't uh, bad, I guess. So after F4, what is Black playing? A6, <laughs> and then F takes E5. Uh, chess is hard. B takes with the knight. I would be reluctant to play. Ah, but then yeah, he doesn't have an E pawn. Sure. Yeah. Okay. This is really good for White. He has to take with the bishop, but then doesn't knight c7 win a pawn? Yeah, and then I can take a bunch of different ways here before he can take here. Yeah, okay, so f4 is just crushing, actually. I didn't see this move at all. I wanted to play it because I want to uncover an extra uh, attacker on this, this weak f5 pawn, but I just thought e4 was not clear. That's a shame. Yeah, looks, looks pretty sloppy. <laughs> uh, let's see, so... F takes g4, bishop g4, king h8, knight e6, rook b8. I think all this was natural. But knight e6, yeah, I think knight e6 was an inaccuracy. This move was not good. Because after rook g8, I have more serious problems than I thought uh, with these squares specifically because of this bishop and the open g file. Um, so what, what should I have done? Yeah, see, if I have to go knight b5, then okay, I shouldn't have gone knight c7 probably. Yeah, knight d2 like I played in the game. Uh, but just earlier, I think this is a good idea, intending to go knight e4. Yeah, that's better. I played knight c7 on the basis that uh, this appeared to be winning a piece, um, but uh, which it does. I mean, this knight is trapped, and if h5, I can just take here, I think. But um, yeah, rook g8, I sort of underestimated the strength of this. And I was late on uh, knight d2. Yeah, if if knight e4, I discovered here that queen queen e4 just makes me instantly because takes takes here. So yeah, sloppy and so so low on time and realizing that uh, the game was slipping a little bit, I went queen f5, just trying to simplify a little bit and eliminate these nasty threats against my king. And uh, he's threatening mate with rook g1. I have to connect my rooks essentially to guard the square. Bishop b2 is really my only move. C takes b4 seems dubious though, because black really relied on being able to capture both ways. And like now I feel like after these moves that that um, this structure at least seems better for white. The computer seems to think that after, after knight e5, black is okay. I wonder why that is. I mean, both of us, I, I presume, thought that bishop c8 won a piece. And if here, I go here. Oh, that's cheap. He can just repeat over and over again. And if I move my queen like somewhere like h5, he can take back. That is dirty. <laughs> Computers just ruining everything. That's funny. I think b5 was just bad, though, because uh, I think my opponent missed that c5 was possible. And after... After this, I, I think I can take on c8, and I'm, I'm keeping the piece in this case. Uh, yeah, because if rook f6, I have queen c2, I think. No, I don't. I, I thought I would just... Oh, because rook takes c8 protects it. <laughs> so here, here, what's different? Huh, man, chess is hard. Like, I would have literally never found any of this. Yeah, winning winning the queen back and then taking back on h3. That is hilarious. Okay, man. Yeah, but after, yeah, after this, I mean, I think black is just is just losing. The computer's right that I don't have to take on c8 right away, though. I mean, now that I look at this position, knight e4 immediately is sort of calling my name. And if rook g6, I'll take on c8, takes on c8, then I'm taking here, and he's just dead lost. And again, I have that queen e5 threat. That's probably more precise. Uh, I thought I was going rook g2, rook g1, though. Ah, he can go... If I take on c8 right away, he can go rook g8. But if I don't take on c8 right away, he can't do that. That's clever. So he blow he sort of blows that opportunity when he goes rook g6. Yeah. And then he allows me to take. 
and then he misses this tactic. Ah, I also could have taken on c8, that's funny. But I played queen e5 for the rub-ins, you know, just to show that I'm, I'm a brilliant tactician that misses hanging rooks in one move. <laughs> Idiot. But I only had a couple seconds. Yeah, and here's where I missed the mate. So when he said I had, I missed mate in one, uh, now I, I, I instantly knew where it is, but I didn't see it at the time. Knight f7. Pretty, very pretty mate. Highly picturesque. All of all of Black's pieces helping in the mate. That's funny, but yeah, I mean, I, I'm I'm dead winning after uh, Rook takes g7 anyway. So Queen takes g7, Rook g7. I mean, he's just lost. And then and then he hangs uh, sort of everything with d2 again. So yeah, very tough game. We we sort of uh, um, threw everything away in in time trouble, but an interesting game nonetheless. Another example of my poor time management. Um, but uh, also a good example of, you know, how how I think black needs to be careful in the the King's Indian. You know, positions like this where where white has essentially spa extra space for not that much and black has his knight on a5, like, black needs to be very careful about about how he approaches the middle game or he risks falling into really strategically difficult positions. Um, you know, I would say a position like, you know, even like this position is just extraordinarily bad for black. Uh, he has the bishop on d4, but other than that, I mean, he has less space and he's got uh, he's got some problems to solve. I mean, King's Indian players like these positions because the plan is obvious, you know, f5 and slowly try to work up play on the king side but um realistically i think you know especially in this case specifically black is trading you know in the king's indian in general i think black is trading giving white a small strategic edge for complexity and winning chances but yeah i mean objectively black should be much worse here so and again i think that stems from sort of bishop f5 and then b6 i would say after this black black had some hard times so, yeah, hmm, interesting game. I hope you guys liked it. I hope you are uh, getting through uh, the week fine. Hump day. <laughs> Finish out the week strong. If I don't, I, I don't know if I'll get to a video tomorrow because I have physical therapy, but I have a couple of ideas for some more uh, instructive content that I'm going to be working on. So hopefully uh, I've got two new um, ideas. One will be a practical ending series on opposite colored bishops. So after my last uh, game that I failed to convert, and, you know, that game's really weird because uh, the leech has computer analysis said I only made, like, one mistake or, like, one inaccuracy or something and that I played really well. But when I looked at it, I thought I played, like, absolute garbage. <laughs> Sometimes when I finish these games and I finish the analyses, I go back in chess base and I analyze them a little bit deeper with myself. And that game specifically, I thought I played the opening and the early middle game, like, really excellent. And then... I thought I converted and played the late middle game like absolute garbage. When I looked at it, I thought I made at least, you know, I would say two or three, like, mistakes and, like, one or two outright blunders, like, in that ending that somehow Stockfish didn't catch or it just didn't, it, it you know, it doesn't have the depth or whatever. And I realized, you know, maybe because I played that ending in Time Trouble, I realized that probably, you know, my intuition, the first moves that come to my head in that opposite colored bishop scenario were just a lot of them were just not the right moves like they were just wrong on a lot of different levels so i think i'm going to do like a three-parter on opposite colored bishops and i'm going to study them uh by myself first and i'm going to put together kind of like a mini course uh on opposite colored bishops similar to how i did the uh the rook pawn rook endings video where i, I kind of start at ground one and then i build up to more and more complicated examples uh with with higher levels of sophistication and more practical value going from sort of theoretical, like, you know, small number of pieces, easy to understand to more practical ending. I, I think I'm going to do that with opposite colored bishops. I think I need a refresher. So um, I'm going to do that. And I have uh, one or two correspondence games that I finished that I, I think would be instructive uh, and in a lot of different ways and would be interesting to review. So and show and kind of humble brag also because <laughs> they're, they're pretty nice games. Uh, so uh you can look forward to that. I also have some opening stuff in the pipeline, but I'm, I'm working on that analysis and that, that takes a little bit longer. So, um, 
yeah, I hope you guys liked it. Have a have a great uh, Thursday if I don't record another video. Hopefully I will see you guys uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, some sometime in that frame with uh, another rapid game and maybe some instructive videos. So, all right. Bye, guys.